In this video on c -sharp Basics, we'll be taking a look at mathematical operators, more specifically, basic arithmetic operators. The plus operator adds two values and returns the result, so 3 plus 2 returns 5. The subtraction operator subtracts the second value from the first value and returns the result, so 3 minus 2 returns 1. The multiplication operator multiplies two values together and returns the result. So 3 times 2 returns 6. The division operator, or forward slash, divides the second value from the first value and returns the result rounded down to the nearest number. So 3 divided by 2 returns 1. A couple of things to remember about the division operator. A division by 0 produces an application error. The division operator also always rounds down. If you need to round to the nearest whole number, you will need to use the math.round method. The math.round method is beyond the scope of this course. However, by the time you're done watching this course, you should have a good enough grasp on methods to understand how to use the math.round method. The remainder operator, or sometimes called modulus, divides the second value from the first value and returns the remainder. So 3 modulus 2 returns 1. One thing to remember for all basic arithmetic is that if you're going to be using variables, then the variables must be of the same type unless they can be converted implicitly. So you must add int with int, and you must subtract a double from a double. That is, unless the values can be implicitly converted. Luckily for us, Visual Studio will tell us when a value can or cannot be implicitly converted. I went ahead and set up three integer variables, a, b, and c. We're setting the initial value of a to 10 and the initial value of b to 4, but we're not setting an initial value to c. Let's take a look at the addition operator first. We're using the plus operator here so that c equals a plus b, and then we're writing the result to the console window. Let's take a look at the results. As you can see, 10 plus 4 equals 14. Next, let's take a look at the subtraction operator. So here we have c equals a minus b, so that should be 10 minus 4. The result is exactly as we'd expect, 10 minus 4 equals 6. I suppose you're wondering what would happen if we subtracted a larger number from a smaller number. Let's go ahead and try that. Let's change a to b and b to a. The result is a negative value of negative 6. Since we're using integer variables, the integer is capable of holding a negative value. Now let's take a look at the multiplication operator. a times b is going to equal c, and then we're printing c. And sure enough, 10 times 4 is equal to 40. Now let's try the division operator. a divided by b equals c, and then write c to the console window. 10 divided by 4 equals 2. Remember, the division operator always rounds down to the nearest number. Let's see what happens if we try to divide by 0. So let's replace b with a 0. As you can see, we received an error in our application, an unhandled expression of type system.divideby0exception. exception. Now there is something called error handling. This particular problem is not being handled by any code. We will be talking about handling errors at a later time in this course, but for now, just realize that you want to try to avoid any division by zero. So what do you suppose would happen if we swapped A and B, so that B is now being divided by A? The result is zero. This is because the actual result is 0.4, but since the division operator always rounds down, we're just going to get a zero. Now let's look at the remainder operator, or sometimes called modulus operator. a divided by b is equal to 2, but also 10 divided by 4 gives us a remainder of 2, and that's why we have the result of 2. Now let's look at some of the issues that can occur if you don't use the same data types. Here I have an int of d equal to 10, and a double of e equal to 3. Then I have an int of f. So what happens if we try to add an int to a double and put the result into an int? You can see that we get the red squiggly line from Visual Studio, indicating that there's some sort of problem. And if I hover the mouse over it, we can see 
cannot implicitly convert type double to int. So how can we resolve this problem? Well, let's try changing int to a double and try changing f to a double. Now we can see that the red squiggly has gone away. There's one other interesting thing that you can do. We can change d back to an int, but so long as the variable f is a value type that can handle the result of d plus e, then we should be all right. This is because d can be implicitly converted to a double, and then a double plus a double is going to equal a double. So let's go ahead and run this. 10 plus 3 is equal to 13. So even though we're using whole numbers, but we're using double variables, everything works just as you would expect. The problem occurs when we try to convert f back into an int, and now we'll get the red squiggly.